Hey guys, what is up? Brennan here, AK Brimbo, bringing you guys another video. Today we're gonna talk about five things every Cobra slash Terminator needs on the car, modification wise. So these will be like kind of necessary things, not things that you would maybe do. These are things that like kind of need to be addressed because it's so bad from the factory. So to start off, number one, which is very obvious kind of with any car is an exhaust. This car is actually very quiet from the factory. So if you put any exhaust on this car, it makes it a whole lot louder. I have Borla attacks on this car, makes it sound how the Terminator should sound. And I'll show you guys a clip of when I put that on. This is with a off-road X-pipe though, um, but that's also kind of something I think that should go with the exhaust is the off-road X-pipe because the cats on this car are very restrictive. <laughs> Number two, in my opinion, is a short throw shifter. This car has very, very long throws and it can be very annoying, especially when you're racing. And uh, it just gives your arm a pretty big workout. So you can get many aftermarket shifters for this car. I have a MGW with the race handle. I have yet to drive it yet because it's still winter and the roads are crappy with salt and everything. But I can already tell from pulling it out and just going through the gears when it's at a standstill or a park that it is probably like 50% shorter. I think it says 35 on their website, but to me it feels like it's like 50. It's very major, super notchy. I'm gonna love it, I know it. Um, but that's a major thing just because it's a sensitive 2003. They weren't focused on stuff like that they are nowadays. So the shifts are just crazy long and I feel like this is very necessary. It's about four bolts, so it's a really easy installation. I have it on my channel, uh, but this is definitely a necessary modification for the Cobra. So here it is, my MGW, it has a Cobra logo on the top. I had that custom. It's a really nice piece to the interior and uh, it's a lot shorter too. So the shift boot's a little more like crammed together, but it looks a lot more clean and uh, I guess newer. It freshens up the interior, I would say, and uh, it just gives it a great look in here. Next, one of the most popular modifications on these Cobras, and that's an upper supercharger pulley. These cars make ridiculous power if you do an upper supercharger pulley and a tune. So I have a 2.76 inch upper pulley on this car, very common size. I do have a ported supercharger also, but that shouldn't matter. The upper pulley gives you a ton of horsepower. I believe with a tune, it can be about 80 wheel. Correct me if I'm right there, but it's something around there. That is also a very easy modification. You do need a special tool, which I had to buy from American Muscle, I believe. It was about $150, and it kind of just pulls it off the supercharger because the stock one is pretty seized on there. Um, you can apply heat to it and maybe get it off, but it's better to be safe than sorry and just get the tool. So as you can see, the 2.76 pulley, you have to get a different belt for the smaller pulley or else the belt's gonna be super loose on the supercharger. And then I got my Steggy Stage 5 port blower right there. But this, the pulley is a major mod that gives you a ton of power. Number four would have to be lowering springs or coilovers. Coilovers are not very common to do on this car, but a lot of people do them still. But lowering springs are very common. So H&R has the sport and race springs. Those are the two common springs people go with. And I have the sport with no isolators, which gives it even more of a low look. Cars are monster trucks from the factory. I will show you guys my car when I first bought it. It was all stock. The ride height is ridiculous. It was about two hands two hands in the rear and in the front about one hand and it made the car look ridiculous it was terrible that was one i think that's like the second or third thing i did to this car within a month and that is a little tricky to do springs on any car um, but anyone can really do it i would say but it really makes this car look aggressive and stanced especially if you put the wheel spacers like i did uh, it just makes the car look a whole lot better. Back in the day, a lot of cars were just raised a lot higher. Now you buy a Mustang GT and they come with minimal wheel gap. But back in 2003, SVT, I guess, just wasn't on top of their game. Um, but also in terms of stance, it also makes the car corner very well because it's lower to the ground, lower center of gravity, and therefore helps in other compartments too, besides this stance. I wouldn't recommend you do uh, no isolators. Um, unless you kind of know what you're doing and you're prepared to maybe hear noise. My car does not make noise, um, but I've heard if you take out isolators that it can. I just wanted to go as low as possible on lowering springs and not spend a ton of money on coilovers, which I've heard makes the ride a little more rough than lowering spring. It's just about two fingers. I do have new 18 AFS wheels for this car, so the wheel will be a little bigger to fill in that gap. So after these wheels are on, I feel like the gap is gonna be very, very minimal. Same with the rear. 
And last but not least, number five, and that is the head cooling mod. These cars tend to run pretty hot and that's just a very common issue with them. So what you can do to prevent that, you can do a, a thermostat, you can do a heat exchanger, radiator, all those things, but the head cooling mod does the biggest effect. Basically, it's a coolant line that connects the left side head to the right side head. It just allows it to basically have more coolant in those cylinders, therefore making it not overheat. I have yet to do that to my car. That is something I'm looking to do in the future, but you kind of have to take out the transmission to get up in there or take the motor out, which I'm not about doing yet. The car doesn't run too bad for me. I did put a thermostat in. I'm going to do a heat exchanger soon, but the head cooling mod, I think it's like $150, but the labor is what really kills you. I can do this myself. I have a lot of confidence in myself to do this since I work on cars every day. I just haven't found the time. And uh, the car hasn't really overheated yet where I feel like I needed to. But this is a very common modification due to this car just because you don't want your car to overheat, obviously. And that's just one of the things you have to deal with if you buy one of these cars is an overheating issue. And that will be my top five modifications that need to be done to a Terminator Cobra Mustang. Once again, that is my opinion. You guys could have a different opinion. But in my opinion, those are things that really stand out and can really help your car if you do these modifications. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm trying to come up with ideas. It's really hard with the winter and everything, but I'm trying my best. Also, I'm very sorry for the wind noise. It is a very windy day today, but I had the perfect opportunity to make this video and uh, I'm sorry. But thank you guys for watching. Drop a like if you agree with my modification ideas. Comment below if you guys think of any other modifications that you guys think need to be done. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.